Hello everyone and welcome back to NP Station. Today we are going to be continuing on in our Flappy Bird project in Python. So as you can see, I have our Visual Studio code open on my computer and this is where we left um, or stopped in our part one. So we ended off with our jump function and we started with our bird class. So in today's video, we will be continuing on in this bird class. There's a lot of code that we're going to be typing. So let's go ahead and get started. But also I wanted to mention that by the end of this video, you'll be able to see the Flappy Bird window on your screen. So you get to know exactly how the window looks like. So it's gonna look awesome. So please do stay tuned to the end of this video and follow along with me in typing the code. Now let's get started. So right after our um, jump function, let's go ahead and add another function called move. And in here, the parentheses will have our self. And inside um, this function, what we'll go ahead and do is our self .tick underscore count. And we'll make sure to add one each time. So basically, this line of code is going to keep track of how many times we've moved since our last jump. <clears throat> So that's all for our uh, move function. And actually, so in here, we're going to create something else called displacement, which uh, will make that, you know, just as a D variable here. So here, we'll basically, it's going to look like a physics equation. And what? And it actually, it, because it is. So we'll have our velocity um, multiplied by our self dot tick underscore count. And then we're going to add 1.5 multiplied by self dot tick underscore count to the power of two. So here, um, let me just go ahead and explain this. So this is actually going to create our arc for our bird when we jump. So you know, when the user clicks their mouse, that is what is gonna cause the bird to jump, right? And we need to create the arc for it. So this is what it's going to do. We have our velocity and we have set that to negative 10.5 in our jump function. So how about I just go ahead and show you. So negative 10.5 is what we'll start off with. And then we'll multiply that by our self dot tick underscore count. That's just one. And then we add 1.5. So 1.5 times our tick count to the power of two. So one to the power of two is just one. And then one times 1.5 is 1.5. So we'll have uh, negative 10.5 plus 1.5, which will just get you to nine, or sorry, negative nine. <laughs> so, and then this number will keep on going up. So it'll go to negative nine, negative seven, negative five, negative two, and then eventually it'll go into positive numbers. So like two, four, or three, five, and so on and so forth. That is what will create the arc for our bird. So I hope you guys understood that. Now, um, after this, we'll go ahead and create a if statement. So if D is <clears throat> greater than or equal to 16, then we'll set D to equal 16. So this is, um, we need to make sure that our velocity is the right speed. It can't be too fast or too slow. So this 16 right here is saying that whenever a bird is moving down um, greater than 16 pixels or equal to 16 pixels, we're going to set that to 16 pixels. We don't want to accelerate any more after the, um, that many pixels. And we'll set another, create another if statement. And this would be if D is less than zero, then we'll set D to equal negative two. So this code is just gonna fine tune our bird movement. And it's saying that if we are want to move up, we'll just move up a little bit more. So this number, you can play around with it. Uh, negative two works well for me, so I'll just keep that as negative two. Um, so yeah, this is just fine tuning our movement of our bird. Now we need to change our y position. So self dot y is equal to self dot y plus d. Again, just changing our Y position. Now we have to start uh, writing the code for how we're going to tilt our bird. So whenever we want to move our bird up, we want to tilt the bird upwards, right? So it kind of, it looks better rather than just moving parallel up. It does, it looks very weird when you do that. So you want to tilt it. Same thing uh, when we are not moving up, we want to tilt the bird 90 degrees down. 
So now let's go ahead and do that. First, we'll work on tilting our bird upwards. So if D is less than zero, let me just uh, bring the code up I have on my other screen here, or self dot Y is less than self dot height, just like this, and then we'll add 50. And then we have to create a, another if condition. So if self dot tilt is uh, less than self dot max rotation, then we are going to set our self dot tilt to equal our self dot max rotation. And now let's go ahead and create an else statement. So else, if we're not moving upwards, we're moving downwards. So we need to tilt our bird downwards. So if self dot tilt is greater than negative 90, then we are going to do self dot tilt is um, or minus equals self dot rotation velocity. All right, so that's the code for tilting our bird. Now go ahead and um, go to the second indentation from the start. And here we need to create a function called draw. So in parentheses, we'll have our self and our window. And then here we um, are going to put in our self dot image underscore count plus equals one equals one. So th what this is doing is we need to keep track of how many times our main game loop has run. So that is the code for that part. And now we need to uh, create another, um, or actually no, click uh, in int a few times here. So you're in the same indentation as our self dot image count. And now we need to create like many if statements so it is kind of hard to type, but this is what is going to, um, like the code for what image we're going to use. So, you know, we have like three bird images. So go ahead and create your first if statement and we'll have if self.image underscore count is less than self.animation time, then self.image is equal to self.images and in brackets, we'll have zero. So we'll do the same thing. So not else, we'll have our elif. Self.image, let me spell that right. Image underscore count is less than uh, self.animation time times two. Then we'll have our, i uh, just copy this line of code. And then we'll change the zero to a one. So since we're going to be doing this a few more times, I'll just copy and paste that. And then we have to change this two to a three and this one to a two. And then again, the same thing. This will be four. And then we'll also have um, this. Actually, yeah, the one will stay the same. And then finally, our last one, so it would be four plus one. This less than sign will change it to two equal signs, and this will change to a zero. We'll add another line of code here, which is self dot, um, or no, not self dot, not self dot image, self dot image count. And then we'll set that to zero. So let me go ahead and explain this code here. So what we're doing is we're checking which bird image to show based on the image count. So you can see that if our image count is less than five, right, since we have set our animation time to five. So if it's less than five, we're gonna show our first bird image. If, the, if it's less than 10, because five times two is 10, we'll show our second uh, bird image and so on here if it's equal to 21 and then we'll show our first one again and this line of code is just resetting our image count all right so now we're done with that now let's go ahead and work on uh you know self dot tilt we'll work on tilting again is equal to negative 80 and then we're going to do if um self dot image 
is equal to self.images. And in brackets, we'll have the uh, second burn image. Let me go ahead and fix this. It should be less than or equal to negative 80. And then we also need to do self.image and underscore count is uh, equal to self.animation time times two. All right. So when the bird, this is saying like when the bird is pointed directly down by 90 degrees, we don't want the bird to flap its wings as that would look pretty uh, odd. So that's why we don't want it to flap its wings when it's straight uh, 90 degrees down. So that's the code for how um, we're going to fix that. And now we need to work on rotating our bird image um, around its center. So this code is from Stack um, Overflow, the one I'm going to type right now, uh, to rotate our image. It is kind of confusing, but it does work. So that's why we're going to just use this. So rotated image is equal to pi game. I think the annotation, yeah, the annotation is correct. And then dot transform and then dot rotate. And in parentheses, we'll have our self dot image and our self dot tilt. There we go. Now we'll create a variable called new rect and this will be rotated um, image. So rotated image dot get rect underscore rect and in parentheses we'll have a center. We'll set our center, let me spell that right, which will be equal to and another set of parentheses We'll add, actually, no, not another set. We'll have our self dot image dot get underscore rect. And then in, now we'll open another set of parentheses. We'll have our top left equal to um, self dot x and self dot y. And then set our dot center here. Finally, we'll have our window dot blit rotated. Um, rotated image, you'll say that. And then we'll also add our new rect dot top left. So you can see that I have uh, typed top left two times here. That The reason is because when we're tilting an image, it always like moves and tilts it to the top left corner, on the top left corner. So that's why I put this uh, code here fixes it to just tilt around its center because we it would look um, off if it tilted on the, the top left corner. So now we're done with that. Let's create another function called get underscore mask. And in here we'll have our self in the parentheses. So in here what we have to do is this is the function we're gonna call when we are dealing with the collisions. So we're not gonna do collisions in this uh, part yet. That's gonna be in a later later uh, video, but let's go ahead and type here, return um, pi game, pi game dot mask dot from surface. And then we'll have our self dot image in the parentheses. So that's all that we're going to do for our get mask. And another um, function we need to create is our draw underscore window. So in here we'll set our window and our bird. So this function is going to do exactly what you think it's going to draw our window. Um, so we'll have our win.blit and in here we'll need our background image and also we'll have zero zero in parentheses here and if you don't know blit uh, basically it means um, to draw so in this function we're going to be drawing our bird on top of our background image and then we'll also have our bird dot draw on the window and then our pi game dot display dot update so this is going to make sure to update our display every second so now we're done with our draw window. Now let's go ahead and create our main game loop. So this is our main game loop. This is, we'll have all the main uh, code for our game here. So let's go ahead and put uh, bird is equal to bird. We'll just name it like that. 
and um, I'm gonna do 200, 350. So this is like the starting position for our bird. We will be changing this, um, these coordinates later on if necessary. And basically that, you know, will uh, set the starting position of the bird. Now we'll go ahead and set our variable window to pygame.display um, dot set mode. Oop, let me fix that. So set mode, and in parentheses we'll have our win underscore width and our win underscore height, just like this. There we go. So I'm gonna take out the cap caps lock. Okay, so this um, now we need to basically deal with how fast our bird is going to fall. So that's why we're going to create something called a clock. So I'm going to create the variable clock and then we'll have our pygame.time.clock here. Notice the C is uppercase. So, you know, we need to make sure that our bird is not falling too fast because we still want it to um, be visible to the user. So that's why we're going to create our clock. And then what we'll also do is have a run variable, which will be equal to true since we are going to create a while loop with while run and then we can later on make run equal false. So now what we need to do is use our clock dot tick and we'll set that to 30. So that line of code is saying that we'll do at most 30 ticks per second and then when the user clicks on the mouse we have to loop through this uh, for loop that we're going to create. So for event and then in pi game, right? So in pi game dot event dot get. And then we'll have our if statement. So if event dot type is equal to pi game dot quit like that, then we'll make here fun equals false. So this uh, for loop is basically whenever the user clicks on their mouse, we, we're going to loop through this for loop and loop through all of the events. So that's why we need that. And now um, we also, let me see the indentation right here. We need to create our bird.move. So we're going to just call our bird uh, dot move function. So this is what we're going to call every time we want to move our bird. And finally, after this, we'll have our draw window and inside, not draw dot, it would be draw underscore window. And then we'll have our window and our bird in the parentheses. And finally, click backspace, we'll have our pi game dot quit. And then we'll quit again here outside. We're doing this outside here. And then click backspace, we'll call our mean function. So let me just go ahead and take this out first. So if um, now we're done, this is all the code that we need for our part two. So you guys are finally done. This was a lot of code. We did all of this in this video. So good job. Now let's go ahead and run this and see how it looks like. It'll take a while to just load. All right, so as you can see, this is our flappy bird window. This looks amazing, guys. You can see that our bird is actually flapping our wings and we um, you have our background image and you know the graphics just look amazing on this. So now what I'll do is, you remember I actually deleted that line of code which said bird.move. So if we do put this, this is what will happen you can see that our bird fell down on the screen. So let me just run that again. And it actually tilts downward uh, when it 
reach like goes beyond that certain point so that looked awesome so great job guys you finished um your part two of the flappy bird project i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did stay tuned on mp station for part three in the flappy bird project um don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and give this video a big thumbs up and i'll see you later on mp station